Hey guys, how's it going? It's again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And thank you for joining the Magic Leap community that I have, you know, in YouTube. And this has been pretty exciting to start making videos about this wonderful platform. So today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to do, you know, how to actually save game information. So a lot of people ask me, Dilmer, how do I save data in the Magic Leap? So I didn't really know at the time. And I actually, what I did is I created a prototype, I put that information in GitHub, and you're more than welcome to download the project. I actually advise you that you download the project so that you know how this actually works. So what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into the code, looking at the code, looking at the implementation, how you can actually extend it. And then by the end of the video, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna basically wear the magic lip, and then look at the experience that I built for you as a prototype, see how it works, see how we can save game information, reload game information, and then show it on a GUI in a canvas. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you how this scene works. So if I hit play, we're going to get an error. And that error just means that we haven't connected our controller. That's fine, because I'm going to show you this scene by running the game in my own Magic Leap 1. So right now, if I hit the S key, you're gonna see that the minutes play keep incrementing, also the player score. So what's happening behind the scenes that's actually getting serialized, which is getting saved to a file, and then it's getting reloaded. And that's why you're seeing the, the new player score and also the new, the new minutes play. So what I wanna show you before we keep going is I wanna show you the, the structure of the project. So I have a demo scene, which is basically the scene that we have right now. And what I'm gonna do, let me just resize this. So everything that we have in the project is in a, is in a serializer folder. The, the reason why I wanted to do this, because I want, I want to simply allow you to drag and drop this folder into your own project, or even better, you can select that folder and, be, and basically export it. So if you wanna use this serializer in your own project, you can clone it from GitHub. So if you go to GitHub, and you go to github.com forward slash Dilmer V. So if you go to that, it's gonna show you all the different repositories that I have available. You can also click on repositories here and then click on Magic Leap Serialization and basically either clone it or download it. Once you have downloaded, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna see what I'm seeing right now on the screen. So if you want to, if you don't want to use basically my project as you know as the basis of your own project. You can go into this folder, you can go in, then into assets, export package, and you can uncheck everything and just basically export the serializer session section. So if you if you export that and then click on export, it's gonna create a unity a unity package, and then you can double click on that unity package and bring it into your own project. So I'm not gonna do that for now, but that's what you can do to import it into your own project. Okay, so the way that this works is I have, you know, I have a serializer folder, which is what you're gonna see on your own project. Then I have a, I have scenes. So if you double click on that scene, it's gonna open what I'm looking at right now. You also have a scripts folder, which is basically most of the functionality for this. So if I click on core, this is a singleton that I use quite a bit for a lot of my projects. I'll show you what that is in a minute. I also have the entities, so we can expand this as much as we want. Right now, I just have three objects. One is the game data that holds the basically the game information, which is going to be a, made up of a player and also a level. I'll show you that in a minute as, as well. And I also have an extension that is basically used for generating random data. So back in our in our hierarchy, what I have is I have basically follow the structure that Magic Leap follows in their own example. So I have this rendering scene rendering game object that has multiple multiple components. So the head, head pose canvas is basically what you're looking at right now, which allows me to, as I'm basically rotating and wearing the Magic Leap one, it basically makes the GUI follow the position of my head. So you can also have, you also have different, different options in here. If you wanna change the distance of the canvas, you can change it. You can also change the layer speed and then other options that are part of the canvas. I also have directional light and also the main camera. This is the main camera that Magic Leap provides. If you haven't, if you haven't looked at how this is set up, go ahead and look at some of my previous videos where I talk about the main camera. 
So the other thing that is really important in here is the test serializer. So the test serializer is the one that I use to capture the basically the keystrokes if I'm in the Unity editor or the controller or by basically hitting the trigger on the controller. So right now I have a script that is called a test serializer. This is a very basic script. All it does is basically I have a serializer data, which if I go to that, it's basically this area right here. I'm going to go to 2D so that I can show you all the different components. Also, I'm going to toggle the gizmos because I don't want the camera to be on the way. So this is the GUI. So I have the title, which is serialized data. I have the info, which is basically all the information that I'm serializing. And by serializing, I mean all the information that I'm saving to the disk. And also a status, you know, when I complete the, serializ the serializing of information or saving on the disk, then that shows a status. I also have this, the status result. So this one is the label. This one is the result. And then these are just some instructions for the user. Basically, you have to hit the trigger button if you want to serialize the information. And then when the trigger button is, is basically hit, it then reloads that file from the system and then renders that information into this section, which is called serialized data. I also have a little notice in here, like if you're running in the Unity editor, you can press the S key to trigger the serialization. So, which is what I show you in the very beginning. So if we go and execute that one more time, so you can see what it's doing, I can hit play. And again, we're gonna get an error because we don't have the controller connected. But you can see that if I go ahead and, and zoom in a tiny bit, it's going to be hard to see on this. Let's actually toggle the low resolution. And if I hit S, you can see that that is changing. I can also go here and get closer. You can also see how the, the minutes play is going to change. And that is actually doing a lot. It's saving to the disk and reloading that information. And that process is called serialization and deserialization. Serialization, like I was saying, is the process of serializing a, an object, a class in C Sharp, and saving it to the file system. And when I, when I refer to the serialization, that means to go to go from a file to an actual object that we can load into memory. So that's that's basically how the the structure of this project. The other thing that I added is I added a, con, a controller connection handler. This is something that is available in some of the examples that, Unit, that Magic Leap provides. You can go to examples and also go into, I believe it's under, let me expand them, and then go into scenes. They have an input module. They have different examples in here. They also have a controller. I believe the controller has some of that information. So if you go to the controller, you also have the, com the controller connection handler that you can use. So I kept it very simple. I didn't have, I don't have most of these, you know, vis visualiz visualizations in my project. So if I go back to, let's go back into our scene. So scenes. So I just kept it very simple because I only wanted to capture the input. So I have the controller connection handler, and then you have other options in here of what things you want the device to be allowed. So we'll go into another video where I show you more about that. For now, just keep in mind that what we're doing right now is just capturing the, the trigger button to getting executed from our controller. So now what I want to do is let's go ahead and, and, and look at the code and see how that, it, that works. So I'm in that folder. So I'm assuming that you clone the project. Once you clone the project, go ahead and open it up, open it up with your desired uh, editor. So I'm using, I, I really like Visual Studio Code. So we're going to use that for this project. So, and I'm going to toggle Magic Leap, and I'm going to focus on the serializer. So I already show you that we had a we had a scene. I also show you the scripts. So this is basically a singleton that I use for a lot of my projects. So you're welcome to use it in your own projects. All it does is basically creates a single instance of an object. And if I go into entities, this is very important because this is the serialized information class. So right now, this is the one that I use for, for the game information. You want to make sure that you have anything that you're going to serialize that you're going to save to this. You have to have this attribute. So this one is called serializable, and it comes from the system. This class, you can call it anything you like. I call it game data because that's basically what I'm saving. I'm saving a player game object. Basically, in this case, it's going to be a player class. And I'm also saving a list of levels, which is an array. 
and I'm initializing this array to have an empty level. So that's what you see here. I'm creating when that array gets initialized, it gets initialized with an empty level, and then also with an empty array that contains an empty level. So now if we look at the level class, let's look at what that contains. So it also has the serializable attribute, and it's called the class is called level. I'm saving the level name. I'm also saving the level number, which is an integer. I'm also saving two different enums, and by enum I mean these things right here that I use quite a bit. So I have a status, whether if the level has been played or not played. So that's what not play means, and then play meaning that I already played that level, and then bm means that I already passed that level. I also have a difficulty in enum. It's either easy, moderate, hard, or extra hard. And like I said, this can be extendable. You can basically put any information that you want to track. This is basically for demonstration purposes. You can have, you know, worlds. You can have enemies. You can have any type of entities that you like. And then I have the two different, basically, variables. One is for the status, and one is for the difficulty. And the initial value for the status is not play. And for the difficulty, I have it set to easy. So how does this look like when I'm actually, you know, when I save it to a file? And that's what I want to show you. So this is what this game data, that JSON is an example file. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and, and prettify this. Let me just go ahead and JSON and prettify the JSON so we can see it. So, so right now, this is basically reflecting what I have in game data. So if I go ahead and I'm just going to snap game data here to the right. So you can see what that the format looks like. So the curly braces around means that this is an object. So that maps to game data. The player maps to the player the player object. So if I go ahead and go to the definition of that, you can see that the player matches that name, the name matches that name, the email matches that name, and then so on. So if you wanted to add an, another property to this, you can basically just go ahead and you know you could add another one here, say. You know, this might be you not know, the age, it might be, I don't know, minutes, or anything that you want to track in your game. And then you would have to add a new property in here that is called minutes. And you can actually initialize it to, to anything that you like. So that will map to that because it has the same, it has the same name. So I'm just gonna delete it because I don't I don't want to add a new property. And perfect. And the other thing that I can do is the same thing with levels. So if I look at the level class, let's go back to game data, right click on this. And this is an array, so this is going to be multiple levels. That's why I'm that's why I have brackets in here. And this means this is the first item in the array. So if I go to that, that now now we're in here. So this means that that's an object. Name means that I'm mapping to this. Number means I'm mapping to that object. The status means that I'm mapping to, so this is actually incorrect. This should actually be, so you could you could either use integers or you can also use, I believe you can use just the name. So in this case, it's gonna be, you know, not play, or in this case, it's gonna be difficulty. So we're gonna see how that looks like when we serialize it. I might have them right. I don't remember if I updated the, you know, to basically to reflect what is basically saving, getting saved to the file system. So, so that's what the representation of the entities are. This is the data that we're going to be saving. So I'm just going to close out of that, close out of this file as well. So now let's look at the implementation. So if I look at the serializer, so if you remember, this is the test serializer object that I have associated with the, with the test serializer C sharp class. So if I look at it, right now I have a test serializer C sharp object, which basically maps to this object right here. And the other thing that I have in here, I'm requiring a component, the controller connection handler. The reason why I did this is because I want to make sure that I'm always ensuring that there's a controller associated with it because I want to be able to control when I'm going to be serializing that data. So when I hit the trigger button on the controller on the magic leap, it's basically going to get the data that I, that I show you is going to get serialized. So that's what you see here. That's the reference to that controller connection handler and then the game data i wanted to show the game data as it was getting saved so i also have it exposed here in the inspector so let's go ahead and, and check 
couple of things that we have. So I have a couple of messages in here, data not loaded, game data could not be loaded. This is just in case I get an error. Then I have the serialized serialized data. These are basically all the UI components that I'm, that I'm connecting. So you can see them in here. This is mapping to that one, this is mapping to that one, and then this is mapping to the controller. So I have that, I have the controller connection handler here, also the game data that is getting exposed. And I put a tool tip in here. Oops, let me go back. And I put a tool tip in here that says don't set this manually, only for display purposes. Because this is really for display purposes. I, I want to I want to load that from the file system. So now, now the next thing is the serialized manager. This is basically what does, does most of the work. Let me just double click on this so that I can that I can snap it. And then I'm gonna put the serialized manager on the right hand side and let's just basically collapse that. So I'm gonna show you what this is doing. So when the game starts, basically on the start method, I'm getting an instance, a singleton instance of the serialized manager. And remember that singleton class that I show you that I'm using on the core, that's what this is doing. That's why I can do serialized manager that instance, that's gonna give me a single instance of that. And then I get an instance of that, which is called serialized manager, and then I associate it with a private variable. Then the next thing that I do is I call the log game data on the serialized manager. Let's look at the implementation a little bit so that you know how that works. It's actually fairly simple. There's not a lot going on in here. Then I create a private variable called game data, initialize it to null. Then I say, okay, go, go ahead and, and combine the path. So if I look at the path that is combining, I'm using application that persistence data path. This is where the file is gonna be saved in the magic leap. So it's important that you know where that is. And honestly, you don't need to know where that is, but you wanna make sure that you, you understand this. So I was trying other different paths and, and that wasn't working. The persistent data path is the one that worked for me on the magic leap. So make sure that you set that to persistent data path. And then the game data file, this is the file that is gonna be saved in the magic leap and it's called game data.json. So I'm basically combining the persistent data path and then game data file name. And this is gonna be the full qualified path of that file in the magic leap. And I check to see, okay, does that file exist? If it doesn't exist, I call a mockup game data. And this is basically why I was showing you that I had an extension. And that extension allows me to create basically a new GUI. So if I look at that extension right here, let's look at it. And all this is doing is basically explaining a new GUI and I, I use extensions quite a bit in my games. So if you don't understand what extensions are, make sure that you look at one of my videos that is called basically Unity C Sharp extensions. And I go in depth on how to create this. So just what I'm doing right now is I'm extending the system that GUI functionality. And then once I create a good, I basically split the good, good by a dash. And Every time you create a GUI, it basically creates a, basically create a multiple parts of an ID. I split it, I get an array back, and that's what you see here, an array of strings. So what I'm saying here is I'm just saying, okay, get me, give me random IDs from the GUI. Then I initialize a new game data object, which I showed you just a few minutes ago. Then I associate the player name to the first, the first basically part of that GUI. I also create an email based on the first GUI. And also I add an at symbol. And then the second part of the email is basically the last ID that I get from that good. And then I do a dot com at the end. Then I get a random score from one to 100. The minutes play, I associate it with, you know, with a random number from one to 100. The level number, I also create a, a random number from one to 50. And then I use the first basically mock level name and then the first ID from that good part and I set the name of the level. Then I set, I, set the, I set the status state to be play and also the difficulty to extra hard. So this is basically just creating a mock-up game data so that I can show you how it looks on the magic leap. So now that I have a file, if a file doesn't exist, I create a new, I create a new game data file and then what it does, so, so, so actually what this is doing is creating a, a mock-up data object. So at that point it hasn't been saved. This is just creating an object in memory. But if, I, if, the file doesn't, if the file does exist, what it does, it reads it from the file system. 
So it's basically going to be that same path. I just say, okay, read all the information from that file, load it into a string, and then I use the JSON utility that Unity provides to convert it to an object. So this is the process that I call, that I told you that was called deserializing. So what it's doing is grabbing that file as a string and deserializing and mapping it to an object. So the cool thing about this is I can do game data and then player and I can access that information after after it's been deserialized. Let me show you how that works before we continue. So I'm going to I'm going to debug this and actually put a breakpoint right here. Because I want to show you how, how this works in, in real for real. So let's go ahead and go into Unity. I'm gonna hit play. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the debugger. Let's go ahead and go back here and then I'm gonna click in this this here and I'm gonna attach the Unity debugger. Excellent. And I'm gonna hit play to attach it. And again, if you haven't looked at any of my videos about VS Code with Unity, make sure that you just search for those videos in my library where I go in and show you how to set up the debugger if you're using VS Code. Okay, now that I have a breakpoint selected, we can go here and I can hit S and you can see that I can now attach just resize this a little bit. And we're gonna look at the variables on the left. So right now it's checking to see, okay, what is the file path? You can see that's the file path while running on macOS. It's gonna be different on when you're running on the Magic Leap. So the file does exist, so that's why I skipped through that part. Now it's gonna try to say, okay, I want to, I want to read all the information from that file. Now if I hover over this, this is basically the raw text data from the file. And now I'm gonna call the what I call, call the deserialization process. I'm gonna step over. So now you see I have an object that is being mapped. So this is where the magic happens. I have a level with all the different attributes that I have that I have in the file. So yep, everything got deserialized. I have the age, I have the email, I also have the minutes play, and then everything got mapped correctly. So that's that's what this part is doing, is basically loading that file which contains a raw string and then deserializing that to an object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop this. We don't need to look at that anymore. Go back in here and resize this part. So, so that's what happens in the star. I basically call, just resize this a little bit more. I call the I, I call the instance to give me an instance of the serializer manager. Then I load the game data from the file system. I map to I map it to an object. Then I call this popular UI data game data, which actually just basically grabs all the data from that object and populates the UI with it. So that's what you're seeing, you know, serialized data, the text, and then I'm appending all those different values. I also set the status of the serializer to complete it. But if we have any errors, if I couldn't, you know, if the game data is null, for some reason, I just basically do a debug that log on the constants that we said right above, which, which said game data could not be loaded. Excellent, and then I just set the status on the serializer to be an error. So that's what that piece does. So, so now let's look at the, the other part of this, which is the, the trigger. So if we look at the handle on trigger, let me see, let me show you where that is set. So I do, I do call the populate UI game data, and I also map the, the this is the magic leak input on trigger down. So the way that it works, this is an event. So I add a handler, which is called the handler on trigger down. And if that happened to be triggered by the controller, this is basically gonna be called by the controller. The controller is gonna say, okay, I have, is this the editor? And this is, I use this basically for, if I'm debugging, if I'm calling the handle, handle on trigger through the unity editor. So on the magic leap, this is not gonna get executed. That's why I have this compiler flag. And then the other thing that I do is if I have a controller connection handler, so I'm using an allable here. If for whatever reason this wasn't set, I wanted to make sure that I that I was checking for that. But if it is set, if I if I'm running this on the controller on the magic leap, then I'm going I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say, okay, you know, I, I executed that trigger button on the magic leap controller. I'm gonna increment the score, I'm gonna increment the minutes play. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that data to the magic lib one. Then I'm gonna reload that data because I wanna make sure that I'm reloading the data after I saved it. And then I'm, I'm gonna populate the UI. 
And if for whatever reason I get an error in the Magic Leap, I also want to see that. So, so what I did is I did a catch, a try, and catch on the exception. And if I do get an exception for some reason, then I, dis I basically set the message of that exception to the serialized data.txt. And I also change the status to be error. But if everything works, you should see the data showing on the on the basically on the canvas. So this is uh, this is something that I wanted to do to make sure that I was, you know, this was actually working on my Mac OS, uh, my Mac OS computer as well. I added a compiler flag and I said, okay, if I'm running in the editor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip all this and I'm gonna basically run this code in the editor. So that's what the co this compiler flag is doing. That's why I have an OR in here. And the way that that one gets executed is if I'm if I have you know if I'm running on the editor, then on the update on the update method I check for that, and if I'm holding the the S key, then I basically call that same mes uh, that same method with default values on these two parameters. So that's basically all this part. Let me just go ahead and just close that, and let's go back into Unity, and that's what, how this works. If I hit the S key. You kind of see that that's working. So let me show you how this work by showing you that on the Magic Leap device. All right, guys, so let me show you how this works. I'm gonna open the ML serializer. And it's opening the Unity scene, adjusting everything. And there we go, so we have Player minutes play, and I can I can move my head. So if I hit the the trigger on the controller, you're gonna see that it starts incrementing, and I can keep hitting it. And basically, so so remember that 130 and then 13,000 on the player score. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the main menu, and I want to close. Let me see if I yep. It's going to ask me, do I want to close all the apps? I'm going to say yes, close all the apps. We'll just give it a minute because sometimes it takes a minute to close the app completely. And I'm just going to click on the ML serializer. So the thing that I want to do is I want to show you how it looks when it loads, just so that we know that the, the data that got serialized got saved. Just click that again. There we go. So it's opening up one more time as a new application. And we should see that the game data got saved. So there's a 13,000. And if you remember on star is actually adding 100 and it's actually adding one. So you got a random number from from one to one to 100, I think. And then the other one did the same thing. So, so this is all working. The data got serialized, it got reloaded and that's basically what I wanted to show you on the game experience. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, make sure that you check out my sponsor, who is GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers, also an amazing community and amazing forums where people like you are looking for help and they have expertise that can help you in solving some of those questions. I also started a Patreon page recently to help me out with, you know, a video editor. I'm also using that funding to basically improve this community and improve my videos. So thank you very much, guys.